So why do startups fail? Well, the answer is really all of the above. Co-founders do fight. Somewhere between a quarter and a third of startups never even get to the beginning of the company because the founders just couldn't agree. Two is that sometimes your vision is just too far in advance to actually be built. Or three is it's such an interesting vision or such a bad vision, but it can't attract sufficient capital to get started. And it's maybe too expensive to fund on your own or through your own resources. And the one we'll be actually talking about in some detail uh, during these series of lectures is that you never actually found product market fit. That is, too few people will buy or will use the product. Now the last interesting thing that's a holdover from thinking about startups as smaller versions of large companies is kind of the hardest to get your head around. And that's large companies, they have VPs of sales. Well, we need a VP of sales on day one. Large companies, they have heads of marketing. I need a head of marketing. And large companies, they have biz dev and all those external organizations. We need those too. Without ever thinking about what's the point why is it that we want to duplicate these same organizations? Because if you're a founder like I was, boy, you really want someday to see you on top and look at all these nice silos working for me. Isn't this great? And look, they're all doing their jobs, etc. I have to tell you, if this is your vision on day one, you are already out of business. Because we now know that functional organizations actually are the wrong way to set up sales marketing and biz dev on day one. What we now know is that the founders need to run what's called the customer development team. And a customer development team says, listen, we're not going to have sales marketing and biz dev on day one. We're not going to hire a VP of sales on day one. We're actually going to have the founder get out of the building. And later in this lecture, we'll explain why. It's a really big idea to understand for organization, you need the founders spending at least 20% of their time outside the building understanding customers' problems and needs and figuring out how that matches with the feature set you're building before you start organizing in functional organizations and silos. The other thing I'll mention, which I'll expand on later in this course, is that one of the mistakes that we've also made for decades is confusing the titles, sales, marketing, and biz dev, with the job specifications. It turns out that the title VP of Sales has a very different job spec in a large company than it does in a startup. A VP of Marketing does very different things in a large company than they do in a startup. And for years we could never uh, explain why is it that incredibly competent executives who've been executing, executing business models in large corporations collapse in startups when their company is smaller than their administrative staff in their large corporation. It turns out the job specification, what we do day to day, has nothing similar. So let's just take a look at the last piece, which is why you're here. How do we teach entrepreneurship? Well, in the past, entrepreneurial education was about execution. We're going to teach you how to write a business plan. We're going to teach you how to put together the PowerPoint for the VC presentation, where if we're doing it really well, we'll have you do lots of research. But it really assumed it was all about execution. What we now know, that's just simply not the case. Entrepreneurial education, the reason why you're taking this class, is about the search for the business model. And we're going to teach you how to search. And so for that, what that means about entrepreneurial education is that eventually we do need you to know everything an MBA knows. Eventually, if you're successful in growing your startup into a large company, you are going to need to know about accounting and HR and organizational behavior and global leadership and etc. But at first, you need a different set of skills that just never existed before. And so welcome to the first class of its type that's going to put search first, and that's a radical change. It's not just one more methodology. So this class is going to teach you all the skills about strategy and process and organization. And eventually, if you build a successful company, we'll then allow you to write the plans and operating documents and financial spreadsheets to actually execute the company. So hold on to your seats. We're about to get started, and let's jump into business models and customer development.